Recently, Russian President Vladimir Putin and the heads of Russia's three largest oil companies rejected a proposal to merge into one large structure. The talk is about the merger of two state-owned companies, Gazpromneft and Rosneft, with Lukoil. The Financial Times reports. The source writes that the head of the Russian Ministry of Energy, Sergei Tsivilev, the husband of Putin's cousin, is in favor of such a merger. At the same time, former heads of Russian oil companies stated that such a merger would give state companies access to Look Oil's trading division in the UAE. However, the Kremlin understands that all Russian oil companies would then fall under sanctions. The merger was first announced on November the 9th. However, the Kremlin and oil companies declined to comment. Conflicting reports about a proposed merger of a Russian oil company highlight potential factional fighting between Putin's cronies and the heads of Russian energy companies. Sivilev tried to use his family connections to promote the idea of merging the three companies. However, the oil company's management also used its leverage in the Kremlin. Rosneft CEO Sechin and Gazprom CEO Miller are longtime and close friends of Putin. The latter had to decline Sivilev's offer, although Putin himself was interested in such a merger. Then the Kremlin would be able to control the entire oil-producing industry of the Russian Federation without any problems. Experts do not rule out that such a merger was aimed exclusively against Sechin in order to weaken his role in the company. Others claim that it was he who insisted on the merger in order to later become the CEO of all three Russian oil companies. The press service of Rosneft denies Sechin's evil intentions. Earlier, media reported that Russian oligarchs are concerned about Trump coming to power in the United States. Russian oligarchs do not share the joy of some of their compatriots over Donald Trump's victory in the U.S. elections and do not believe that the elected American president will lift the sanctions imposed against Russia, just as they do not believe in a quick end to the war in Ukraine. In this regard, they do not see prospects for optimism in the Russian economy, pointing to its significant change over the full-scale invasion of Ukraine, which makes long-term goals unattainable. Due to the departure of international companies from Russia, the Russian economy is experiencing a degradation of production capacity, especially in the technology and engineering sectors. The Kremlin's declared import substitution is proceeding slowly and sending Russians to war is exacerbating the labor shortage. The United States is committed to making sure that every dollar we have at our disposal will be sent to Ukraine by January 20, Secretary of State Antony Blinken told journalists on Wednesday during a visit to the NATO headquarters in Brussels. Concerns about the U.S.'s ongoing commitment to supporting Ukraine, and to NATO more broadly, have been swirling since Donald Trump won the presidential election last week. Trump, with varying degrees of consistency, has been critical of NATO and support for Ukraine and Taiwan, two democracies under threat that depend on U.S. military support to counter Russia and China. 
He has shown little interest in the long-standing U.S. role as anchor of strategic alliances with European and Indo-Pacific democracies. Before the election, partners and adversaries already were re-evaluating their security arrangements in preparation for Trump's possible return. Blinken also insisted that now was the time for Israel to end its war in Gaza and called for more extensive humanitarian pauses in the fighting there. Well, good morning, everyone. Uh, first, it's a pleasure, uh, as always, to be back uh, at NATO. Uh, we had very good discussions with Secretary General Mark Rutte. Delighted to see him at the helm of the alliance uh, in this critical moment. Uh, as well as with uh, all of our NATO colleagues of the uh, North Atlantic Council. Uh, the purpose of this visit is to focus our efforts on ensuring that Ukraine has the money, the munitions, and the mobilized forces to fight effectively in 2025 or to be able to negotiate a peace from a position of strength. Uh, we've obligated just uh, recently and pushed out the door another $8 billion in security assistance for Ukraine. That was in September. Another almost uh, half a billion dollars uh, just a few weeks ago. And President Biden is committed to making sure that every dollar we have at our disposal will be pushed out the door between now and January 20th. On the Middle East and on Gaza. Um, let me be very clear about both the intent and the effect of uh, the letter that Secretary Austin and I sent uh, a month ago to our Israeli counterparts. The intent was to inject a sense of urgency with Israel to take necessary steps to address the dire humanitarian situation of children, women, and men uh, in Gaza. The effect has been that of the 15 steps that we urged action on, Israel has taken action, either in implementing or in the, being in the process of implementing 12 of the 15 steps. There are three uh, big issues that need, still need to be addressed that come from the, the letter. Uh, short of ending the war, which we believe now is the time to move to that, um, we have to see these humanitarian steps fully implemented, sustained, and as I said, particularly with regard to pauses, having more extensive pauses. One final thing on this. Um, Israel has to meet these responsibilities. And we will be tracking this every single day. The Israeli military on Wednesday struck several sites in Beirut's southern suburbs, an area known as Dahia, after issuing evacuation warnings. It said the strikes were targeting Hezbollah facilities and interests. There were no immediate reports of casualties. Also on Wednesday, an Israeli airstrike on an apartment building in the town of Aramoun, just south of Beirut, killed at least six people and wounded 15 others Wednesday, Lebanon's health ministry said in a statement. The state-run national news agency reported that there were children missing after the strike and, it is not known whether they are under the rubble or were transferred to a hospital in the area. There was no warning issued before the strike, and it was not clear what the target was. There was no immediate statement from the Israeli military. Israeli forces and the Lebanese militant group Hezbollah have been clashing since October 8, 2023, when Hezbollah began launching rockets across the border in support of its ally, Hamas, in Gaza. The conflict escalated beginning in mid-September. Israel has launched a widespread aerial bombardment of Lebanon and a ground invasion that it said is intended to push Hezbollah back from the border.